I'm gonna get on the Africa Twin. This is just gonna be pretty much my first thoughts on this bike. It's not gonna be any detailed review. I'm wearing all my old Harley gear right now. Soon enough, I'll have some adventure gear. So one of the biggest things that I'll notice right away is how big this bike is. I've got the seat in a low position and I'm on the balls of my feet with that. I'm still able to ride it though. The other thing I'll notice is this tank. This tank is a huge tank. Need some crash bars and I got them in those boxes right over there. 21 inch front wheel. Both tires tubeless. Big, big bike. Let's get this out in the driveway. The other thing I really like about this bike the other thing I like about this bike is it's got the widest steering axis I've ever experienced on any bike. It's crazy. It's easy to move it around in this garage, actually. There is a lot of technology on this bike. And it took me a little bit of time going through it, through the manual, try and figure out some of it. I will get that in a little bit. Let's get this started. It's just a beautiful bike. It really is. All right, let's ride. Bike is super comfortable. It's ridiculously comfortable. I feel like if I ate a whole bunch of miles up on this bike, it'd be able to do it no problem. First of all, this huge tank will allow me to go 350 miles at least without stopping, depending on my riding style. And it's just, it's comfortable, right? I mean, I rigged out my Sporty to be able to ride long distance. And the mods that I did made those rides really possible. I shouldn't even be comparing it to a Sporty, but out of the gate, this bike is just an amazingly comfortable ride. So yeah, different modes. It's got urban, gravel, off-road, and it's got two user modes, and then tour. I've been keeping it in urban mode just because I've been riding around the streets of Madison, Wisconsin lately. It feels weird actually, guys, to, to do an old school mode of log. It's been, gosh, 15 months since I've done one, like really have done one. I'm really happy though that a lot of you stuck around and are enjoying the motorcycle content. But the other thing that I know is about this bike, and I'll show you here in a moment when I'm in a better position, but it just pulls, man. You know, whereas my iron had a lot of low end torque, but this parallel twin pulls throughout the range and that's what I want out of a bike and this parallel twin too the way it sounds it uh, sounds like sounds like a v-twin you know it just kind of rumbles I mean it's nowhere near as loud as my Harley with all the mods that I've done but yeah it just it sounds great it feels great now this 1100 cc bike with about a hundred horsepower so a little bit more than double my sportster and torque i'm not i don't remember what it is i'll flash it up on the screen but the torque is pretty good at 7,000 rpms 
so what it does is it as I go over bumps and gravel or potholes or whatever it it basically reads the road you know I've felt it a couple times where it's adjusted and it just felt really strange at first but I, I think I like it I think I like it quite a bit and of course comes with heated grips oh do I love these heated grips I wish I had heated grips on my Route 66 series and of course it's got wheelie control you can adjust the power given the conditions and it's got enough power like right now I was in third gear this bike's got enough power where if you find yourself in the wrong gear you could still pull yourself out of it all right I'll show you what this is about let's put it in touring mode right there all right let's really pull on this second gear third gear oh does it pull Woo! fourth gear still pulling hard All right, in fifth gear. Revs are a bit high in fifth gear. Of course, I'm, I'm pushing the rev range right now. Let's get it in sixth gear. Dropping down to about 3,000 RPMs, 55 miles an hour. And this bike, at this speed, it's really, really comfortable. Oh, and it's got power. It just, oh, it's so much fun to ride. And one thing I don't like right now is wind is like a vortex coming up down through the forks here. So I need to come up with a solution to, to change that. And I'll have a video on that soon. You'll see how I'll fix that. But this tall windscreen though, it's keeping things off my chest here. It's not exactly like riding on a sofa, but it's pretty damn close. I can see myself loading up all my gear on this bike and just traveling to, to see some friends, having adventures on it. Now this is the adventure sport bike, so it's it's more the road-oriented sport touring style rather than the off-road. But if you've been following this channel any length of time, you know I don't like to do things standard. You know I like to challenge myself. So I'm probably going to mod this bike to be able to take it off-road a bit. Yeah, sure, 530 pounds this beast is. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge, but I know I'm going to be able to handle it. This may be one of the last rides with my showy quest helmet i've had this now for over three years and i put on about what thirty thousand miles on it it's time for a new helmet and i'll have that on sunday i'm looking forward to getting that helmet this bike is a ton of fun i've been wanting this bike for a long long time i was talking with wet banana moto the other day on the phone and we were talking about coming up to a stop sign or a stoplight and balancing a bike everything from my sporty up to a big bike like this and we're talking about how is it truly necessary to, to balance the bike and I was hoping to show it to you at this light but typically what I do is I won't put my feet down even if I can put my feet down fully and is it honestly necessary probably not but it's it's just fun to do it's a good skill to have all oh, in these heated grips they're fired up now they feel really good it's got a uh, USB port right here I've had this bike exactly for three days three rideable days I picked it up from a dealership in Minneapolis Moon Motorsports in Monticello Monticello. They hooked me up. Oh, here we go. I'll show you how I'll balance. I'll just do it for a little bit, but what I'll typically do is I'll approach slowly.
and I'll just balance the bike for a little bit. Sometimes I, I get away with it and I'm able to to balance and then without putting my feet down. This bike, it looks top heavy. It's a tall bike, but once you get it moving, it doesn't feel as heavy as it looks. It's, it's pretty cool. The thing about this bike is it's compared to my Harley, it's quiet. I can I can hear myself talk, and you can definitely hear me a lot better than on the Harley. But as is my MO, I'm gonna go through a series of mods on this bike. And uh, I'll take you along for the ride as I do it. Let's go back in urban mode here. The other thing that's nice is you can adjust the preload on this. You can set it for one rider, two riders, and one rider with luggage and two riders with luggage. And in the user modes, you can really adjust the suspension and power, the torque, everything to how you want it. Once I figure this bike out a little bit more, I'll be probably using the user modes a lot more than these set modes, but we'll see. So here I'll balance a little bit, you'll see. It's just a fun bike to ride. It really is. It's got cornering lights, so as I'm going through some turns at night, when it feels the bike lean over in a corner, it will, uh, those lights will turn on. This windscreen goes up and down, low position, which it's in now, and then you can pull it up into a higher position. Given my height and the way this windscreen is set up, I don't anticipate myself putting it in the high position, but we shall see. So yeah, that's my first thoughts on this bike. We'll see the evolution of this, like you saw the evolution of my sporty. And it's gonna be a fun ride, guys. Thanks for watching.